Did you inherit $1 million from your grandparent? Or are you about to become wealthy from someone else's hard work? If you say yes to these questions, this show is not for you. You, the hardworking, committed, and ambitious professional who have a 9-to-5 corporate job or a 12-hour shift worker keeping the assembly line running. Perhaps you run your gig as a freelancer, or maybe you run a small business. You are in the right place. Welcome to the Career Evangelist Podcast, where you get your weekly tips, ideas, strategies, and inspiration to find purpose in what you do so you can build a career you are passionate about and live a fulfilled life. Here is your host, Bola Alabi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Career Evangelist podcast. Today, we are joined by James Ilovsky, a dedicated franchise broker with a passion for empowering entrepreneurs and sports professionals. James brings a wealth of experience in personalized franchise matching and rigorous due diligence by ensuring his clients make informed and successful business decision. So whether you are assessing franchise opportunity or you are just uh, looking to see how you can grow your income, you are going to want to hear from James as he shares his wealth of experience with us. Without further ado, I will bring in our guest. Hey, James, how are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Awesome. It's good to have you here, uh, James, and thank you very much for joining our community. So my listeners, they would like to hear from you. They want to know you. They want to know what you do, and they are going to be interested in what they are going to learn and gain from uh, this episode today. So can you please introduce yourself to us, James? Yes, yes. So uh, what I do is I'm a, a franchise broker and I match uh, athletes, professionals to franchise business opportunities. So anybody who's looking to get in business uh, for their own and they think they might want to go down the franchise path, uh, I help them in, in a variety of different ways. I have over 500 franchise brands in my inventory. So my whole goal is to find out, you know, basically owner operator models, passive models, kind of investment level and uh, the industries of interest. Then also, you know, there may be five, 10 different options that I think would really be good, great fits. And then I did introduce the uh, candidate to the franchisor and stay with them during the whole time to make sure that, hey, we need to know how to read an FDD. We know how to verify uh, with franchisees in the system. If we need funding, I can help them if there's uh, funding issues and make those um, uh, you know, introductions. And so I'm basically advising and staying with the client the whole way through. And the great thing about it is uh, I just, I work, uh, based off of, I get paid out of the franchisor's marketing budget. So the client doesn't pay me anything or have to pay any extra fees. So it's definitely a, a win-win to take the, uh, the to advice of, of a franchise broker. Awesome, I love win-win situation. And uh, I do not want to make any assumption here today. In my audience, I have lots of working professionals. I also have uh, small business owners. Well, let's break it down to them. Uh, what does it mean by franchise uh, business? What does that mean? Yeah, that's a that's a great question because your know, franchise business, you know, typically when you're thinking franchise, you're thinking Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, just the big restaurants. That's what you're thinking a franchise is. Well, that's really, if you drive down the street and you look at all the signs or the trucks that go by you, chances are about 50% of those are franchise uh businesses. And, and uh, you know, it's in many different industries from the restoration business to plumbing to to uh, even indoor golf studios. And, and, and a franchise business, what they do is they support you from, you know, from basically the beginning. They'll help you with site selection. The franchisor will. They'll help you with training. So even if you're someone who goes, hey, I want to get into the dog grooming business, but I've never groomed a dog. 
they they train you how to do that, the people to hire and how you're just going to be running the business and managing the manager or hiring the right people. They help you do that. They have systems in place via marketing, via accounting wise, just and then POS systems and they they help you with build out. And then they also, once you're open, they give you that ongoing support uh, of, of a daily uh, check-in. Well, maybe like a, a, you know, a weekly, monthly check-in, depends on the franchise. But what you also have in a franchise system is you have support of franchisees that are in the system that, that are there. So if you're experiencing a problem, you could call the franchisee down the street or right in the state next to you and going, hey, here's the trouble I had. How do you, how did you handle this? So you have a wealth of business knowledge helping you in your business when you're in a franchise system. Awesome. So uh, maybe let's uh, take it a step further. Uh, can you share with us uh, maybe some of your background and how your journey uh, in becoming a franchise broker? Yeah, absolutely. So I was in the restaurant industry. I was in a uh, uh, a large corporation where I was a you know district manager, regional manager, and um, from there. I had a company that that uh, another company that said, "Hey, we have one unit. We want to uh, you know we want to expand. Come help us run our franchise unit." So we had one unit at the at the time. I helped build that over to a hundred units, supporting the franchisees and the franchise group. So I would help them open their store as well as help support and be that ongoing support for them. And then the largest franchisee came to me and said, hey, will you come, uh, you know, partner with us and run our operation? So we had, uh, we had our restaurants and then we wound up doing, getting into another ice cream franchise that we did a couple stores for. We did our own um, cookie dough concept and then we did our own um, uh, coffee shop. Uh, and at the time, it, it, they were two NFL players that were there and one of the brothers then retired after a while and the other brother got hurt, couldn't fulfill the rest of his contract. And they just decided, hey, let's um, we kind of want to get out of the restaurant business. And uh, I was perfectly fine with that. But they went into the tequila business, which love the tequila business. Nothing wrong with that, but just not really my passion and my area of expertise. So I went into the franchise business and in the franchise world of just not just wanting to help people find right businesses and match for them, because in my experience around the uh the NFL brothers, I saw a bunch of business opportunities come come up to them that were just crazy opportunities that were just because they knew that they had some money that they would probably invest in it, which they were pretty smart. They, they were pretty wise with their money, which they did not invest into some of those things. And I just said, you know, really, I, I could go out and help people find franchises in the franchises in my inventory, that's four to 500, you know, there's about 2000 franchises or more out there, but those are the ones that have been vetted and that I feel are really good franchise systems that give you a great chance to succeed where you're going to get that ongoing support. So when considering uh, whether or not to go into a franchise business, I'm sure there will be some uh, qualities or mindset that uh, you would consider as essential for success. So what are those for people that may want to consider uh, starting a franchise business? What are what are the key, uh, key mindsets or key qualities that you would say are essential for success? Yeah, I, I would think really the, the one thing that it's just the fear, you know, the fear of going out and, and starting your own business or, or, or going out there. I think that mindset is, hey, you know, I'm going to dive into it. I'm going to give it 100, 150 percent. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make this work. If you can let go of that fear. And and uh, I think that's one of the biggest mindsets that that you can change. And just remember going either going off on your own, but but especially in a franchise business, you're going to have all that ongoing support and people pulling for you and giving you that advice. So, you know, they're basically going to give you a playbook and you're going to follow it. So the fear is one thing. You just have to go, hey, take a leap of faith and, you know, bet on yourself instead of, you know, corporate America that, that has you that, you know, maybe in five years when you're getting a little older or you're making a little bit more money, they might want to downsize that, you know, there's no loyalty anymore. They, you know, just 
get, out, get over that fear and bet on yourself and, and go into business to where you can create generational wealth. Oh, that's awesome. You are telling people to bet on themselves. I do tell my audience this uh, every so often uh, because that's really the, the uh, best path to success. Now let's talk about misconceptions uh, because I know some people, they may not know all the details about franchising, right? So what are some misconceptions uh, that are common to franchising uh, as you know it? Yeah, so misconceptions in franchising are, hey, they just, you know, they just want your money. They just want the top line. You know, they, 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 why, why give them all these fees that they pay? And you pay some astronomical fees. And, well, you, you are paying a, a one-time franchise fee. But that's going to help with your training, get your business set up, getting uh, if it's a if it's a brick and mortar, help you with that site selection, and then the ongoing fees that that are in there, you know, that there's it ranges from five to seven percent of your sales. But just think of it this way: that is that advice that you're paying for, those systems, those processes that you pay for, and and some of it, the uh, misconceptions too is okay. Well, I'm in this business. I I don't I don't have any say. Well, that's not entirely true. A lot a lot of times franchisors will go, hey, yeah, we could try this new product. I'll give you you know an opportunity to test that product if that's maybe something. But you definitely have a voice. There's franchisees are on a council where they can uh, have a lot of influence within the franchisor. Also, I think that people go once you're in a franchise, you're locked in it for ten years. Because uh, you do sign a ten-year agreement, but you know that's your asset. It's your business. Everything in that business is yours. So you can sell that business um, in that ten-year space. You can add on, get another territory, or, or let's just say something happened to where you got sick, couldn't run the business. You still have all the assets that you bought for the business to sell. So it's it's not like you you know you, that you're locked in with the franchise. You do have different options to grow, build, build your business. Uh, awesome. So now let's talk about your process. Uh, can you walk us through your due diligence process for assessing potential franchise opportunities? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Great question. So a client will come to me and say, you know, I'm looking to get into the franchise business. Uh, you know, so we're going to talk about, okay, well, you have liquidity, liquid cash. I would suggest that you have probably at least about 50,000 of liquid cash to be able to get an SBA loan uh, uh, that you're gonna get approved on. And, and uh, then also think of a total investment. What's that gonna look like? You know, you're comfortable with 200,000 and under, or you know, uh, over 200,000. If you want food, well, we're talking half a million and above because those are the most expensive uh, investment levels. But it, that's kind of what we're going to kind of hone in on. And if you just want to see your options and all that, that's great. But then we also ask, are you looking to be an owner operator? Meaning you're going to transition for your job now and you're going to run the day to day. Or do we want to look at different uh, franchises to where you can hire a manager to run the day day to day, you'll it'd be your business, but you'll be hiring, you're, you'll be, you know, basically having a manager and, and just being over, overseeing your manager. And sometimes you can, most of the time you can keep your current job and then you could uh, transition into that once you have the business up and, and running. And then you could, some, some of the uh, key things people will go, well, I'll wait till I get to territory or unit number two, then I'll transition out of my job into that. So those are very important questions of the goals of owning a business, of, of how to do that. And then we'll talk about, okay, what industries do you have of interest? And, and we'll go through all the different different industries that are out there and, uh, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, in pets and in, in senior care and in, in pest control, home services, uh, uh, you know, in sports franchises, uh, health and wellness, muscle recovery. So we go through, you know, gyms, there's, we go through a big list and, and they'll go, you know, they'll, they'll give me what they have interest in. And then um, I'll show them maybe five to 10 different options uh, that, that I would recommend that I think would be great. And uh, they'll go, hey, James, I like these one or two. 
I'll introduce them to the franchisor. And then, like I was saying, I'll stay with them during the whole time because the franchisor, when you talk to the franchisor, it's not like talking with a used car salesman. Um, yeah, you know, you're talking with a franchisor. They're basically interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them during the process and learning much like we're talking now because, hey, you're going to be their business partner right. and you got to make sure it's going to be a great fit for, for both of you. So that's very important. And then you just, you keep having meetings of here's what our marketing program is going to look like. Here's what our operations team is going to look like to where they feel that you have a great grasp and knowledge of the whole system to where you can make your decision. And during that time, they will also send out an FDD, which is a franchise disclosure document, which has all the fees and basically what the investment levels going to be like and uh, for that franchise. So you have that document. And then what I always suggest is when you're looking at a franchise, verify with franchisees in the system. And what you want to find out in there is, hey, how quickly did you, you know, make you, make your money back? When were you profitable? You know, would you do it again? And the main thing is, what kind of support do you get from the franchisor? And if you feel it, talk to franchisees, because some of them are going to be, oh, this is the, you, you know, you're not all going to get all perfect because I don't think there's a perfect system out there. You want to look for the majority of them that are going to be perfect for sure. But you're also, the most important thing is what kind of support are you getting from the franchisor? Because if I feel if you get great support from the franchisor, you, you both have a mutual respect and think it'll be a great partnership. That's going to be your biggest key indicator of if you're going to be successful or not. Oh, that's great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, James, for, uh, you know, stating all those flaws. And I think you touched on a few very important points. Uh, you talked about SBA loan uh, for uh, a franchisee you, you, or someone that is uh, intending to start a franchise business. Uh, you talked about training that is available from the franchisor. And I know you also mentioned the network effect because you are going to get support. They will help with location. They will help with, uh, with uh, setting up the business, which is a lot, in my opinion, easier than a somebody out there just sitting down and trying to start on their home without having all this network of support. So this is, this is a great one. Now, uh, you also mentioned uh, industries, and I'm curious to know what are some industries that uh, you've uh, maybe been working with uh, in, the, in the recent uh, year? Yeah, so I would say the uh, one of the most industries with one of really high margins that you really wouldn't think of would be in the pet industry, specifically in, in dog grooming. Uh, dog grooming, you know, your your margins are, are in the 30 to 40 percent range. There's dog grooming franchise out there that, you know, you're talking 1,200 square foot of a building. That's that's all you need. So it's not a, not big. And they have a really good rub because they do a, um, a uh, subscription base. So imagine forty five dollars a dog. You could take in as many times as you want during the month. So. Right there, you're blowing away your competition. Yeah, and uh, you know the investment level on that's under two hundred thousand, and your money's back well within the first year potentially. Oh. So uh, that's one of the really the the hotter ones that's out there with really good margins. There's um, muscle recovery studios for young young athletes that are out there uh, that you know you can have a brick and mortar. You could take a mobile unit into. Uh, when there's tournaments going on. So you have that mobile unit and then you have the subscription based in the brick and mortar that uh, does, uh, you know, compression boots and, and uh, muscles uh, stimulating the muscles. So they're getting recovered quick at red light therapy. So that's another great franchise. It's uh, out there for, you know, under $150,000. There's a uh, indoor golf studio that uh, indoor golf simulator where you come practice your golf game. Oh, wow. 20 24 7 access zero employees zero employees oh. because it's 24 7 you just need someone to maybe clean up and and tidy up so it's it's uh it's a really good franchise to where if you're looking at keeping your job it's something you could build and transition in because you really don't have to do much uh you know uh, uh leg work on, on that so you know those those are a uh, couple ones out there as well as you know, you think of window washing and 
and you know the margins in there are 30 to 40 percent as well that that d- does really well so and, and most industries usually have one nugget in there that that's uh that's like that and and uh you know you you just definitely have to kind of find them but the the, the they're most all industries are pretty strong senior care is strong um out there uh, as well and and the restoration business is, is super strong as well oh this is good i, I like uh one of the points that you mentioned that uh, people can transition into it. Because as I said earlier, I have uh, many uh, working professionals in my uh, in, in my audience. And many of them, they, are, they have this entrepreneurial mindset and they are considering starting a business. And I'm sure they will jump on any idea that uh, can help them to work part-time while they build uh, their franchise business. So uh, I appreciate you for mentioning that. Uh, now, uh, how do you help clients uh, manage and understand risk that are associated with franchising? Because like every other thing out there, I'm sure there will be some risk in this as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think the biggest thing to, to manage uh, Risk, and I think the thing that that comes up really is, and we mentioned this earlier, is that fear. You know, you definitely are going to have risk. It, it is going to be a risk. The biggest thing you can do is, you know, bet on yourself, but also, you know, what is going to give you the best chances for success? And I would just say, if you're going into it in a franchise system with the franchise support and all those franchisee support. Because, you know, you might just think some of the other things is like, well, it's a franchise. They've sold one. They don't care. Well, they want you to succeed because they don't want someone to go, oh, yeah, we had a, we have a franchise system. But, you know, five of the units closed this year because we couldn't get them profitable. They, that's not what they're all about. They're all about helping entrepreneurs out there. And they want they want you to grow your business. So I think really the the risk factor is. Your, your risk is mitigated a little bit by the franchise uh, system because you are going to have that support. You, they have gone through the pitfalls that already that, that you're facing that they know how to adjust as well as you have those um, franchisees in the system. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say, you know, fear and just know that you have that that help there are, are going to help you with your risk. But yes, it, it, it is a risk that, you know, if you're trying to bet on yourself and uh, it, it's all a risk, you know, always people think that, hey, real estate's a great, great thing to get into that, you know, there's not much risk in it. Well, if you're renting out a property and your uh, renter leaves and they turn the water on before they go or they pour concrete down the sinks, you know, that's going to cost you a pretty penny. So, you know, there's, there's risk in everything that you do and, and why not do it with a team to support you? Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned uh, systems uh, a couple of times. And I do agree with you. Uh, Starting a franchise business means you are going into a business that has a a system in place uh, already. And I think that is way easier and better than starting something uh, from the ground up and trying to build that system. So uh, thank you for uh, mentioning that. Uh, now, I-, I love success stories. Uh, can you share with us a success story of a client that you helped and who has a, maybe started a franchise business, maybe last year or this year, and uh, how you walk this person through the process? Yeah, so I, I had a, uh, a client that was uh, in corporate America, making a you know a really good salary, or, you know really good, and he's like, well, you know I I you know I my job's okay, I make really good money, uh, you know I'm really having struggling because my kids are in sports, I'm really kind of you know I'm, I, I make what I can, but I, I I would love to be able to make everything, and I I'm looking for something to be able to do to where I can transition out of you know my my job and we looked at uh different industries that were out there we looked at the restoration area we looked at you know some in, in pest control we looked at um 
we we looked at a uh, actually a a car franchise that did oil changes that uh, were there and and but we just we kept going through some different things and then we got into dog grooming and and he loved that concept uh, the, the dog groomer I, I was telling you about and what was really why he really loved it was he was like well my wife loves it my kids love it what I think we're gonna do we're going to sign up for a three uh, territory deal after talking with the franchise, he fell in love with the franchisor, visited a site, did all his homework. They just decided, you know what, we're going to do a three store deal. The first one, you know, my wife is going to uh, run the day to day and the kids are going to be involved in, in the business. I mean, I, they're high school kids, so they can be involved in a little bit of it. And uh, he said, my whole plan is to, you know, after we have the, we open up the second one, then I'm going to transition out. And then the third one will basically be uh, you know, where, where we're going to set that up for the kids. And then we add on there, it's just going to be more generational wealth because we see this franchise as something we want to build and build a little dog grooming uh, you know, empire. Uh, I like that. Uh, and I, I like everything about generational wealth. Uh, we have to be able to... Uh, help the upcoming generation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, James, for sharing that. Now let's talk about the Fran Dream. Uh, tell us more about Fran Dream. How do you uh, walk through the process of matching? Uh, because I know you are matching to people with the franchisor and the franchisee. How does that process work? How can my audience benefit uh, and take advantage of what you are doing? Yeah, I mean, I just would love anybody. You could go to the frandream.com. Uh, there, there's a lot of different uh, educational um, pieces on my website, as well as there is a uh, business assessment that you can take. And it it, it, it will tell you, it, it kind of helps me too when I work with clients of, you know, this might be where you have a lot of strength in this area and uh, you would be matched up really good with a uh you know, a gym concept or uh, uh, or a wedding dress concept that, that does that. So, um, you know, there's there's assessments, there's a business assessment on there. Uh, there's a form you could fill out to where, you know, I could email you, you could email me, I could get back with you. Uh, we could have a simple phone call, really kind of, it just starts out with a phone call and just let's talk about franchising and, you know, what, what are you looking at? And, and, is it a fit for you? You know, maybe if, if you're a person that goes, you know, I really don't like to follow systems. I, I kind of want to do my own thing. I want to be a, a lone ranger out there. Well, franchising might not be for you. And, and, uh, you know, my, it just, you know, we just have those conversations of going, do we think it's a fit? And let's just go along this journey of seeing if, it, if, if we find a great fit for you and that it's something that, uh, you know, we, we could just keep exploring because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't hurt to learn more about franchising, look what's out there. And then even when you're talking with a franchisor and you go, gosh, that's not a fit, but you know, just tell me and then I'll make the call to the franchisor and say, hey, you know what? It, it's just not a fit at this time. And they're perfectly fine with that and, and OK with that. So I will handle all your, uh, you know, uh, introducing you. And, and if it doesn't work out of handling those phone calls and, and taking care of, uh, you know, just basically your needs and advice and anything about franchising, I'd love to talk to anybody about. That's awesome. So the world that we live today keeps uh, evolving. Uh, it's the world of AI today. And I'm thinking about franchising. So what do you see as the future of franchise business and how are you preparing your client for that future? Yeah, so, so a lot of the franchisors are looking at what, what is enhancements can AI do to uh, their business. So a lot of the franchisors are doing that. When I look at my personal business, you know, I look at maybe, you know, capturing some lead gen via the AI. And then I also go, well, what if someone just puts in, I want a franchise and I want to put it in AI? 
well, AI is really good, but you know they don't have the experience and they don't have the expertise of telling you, hey, this is exactly you know some a franchise to go with. They might say, hey, one of the largest franchises is Subway. Go with Subway, and I'll you know if you went AI, and I would go, well, you know you don't want to go with Subway because you know they've struggled in recent times of you know they don't give you a, a big. Uh, area of protected territory and probably is not a really good franchise to go into because they could build one, you know, less than a mile away from you and, and cannibalize your your unit. So things like that of of the knowledge of franchising the franchise system. I, I just I don't think that AI can help you find the perfect match. Yeah, that's that's correct. So uh as we are rounding up, what advice would you give to someone that is considering starting a franchise business as your path to business ownership? Yeah, so I would just say, hey, one, let's make sure the family's on board. Two, let's make sure that you know that there is there is a risk. So let's let's try to you know that we can we can put that the fear to rest by finding a great system that's going to give you that great support. And uh, then it's just basically, let's let's find that great partnership. Let's find that great support. And let's just, uh, you know, let's just get started on, on your journey to entrepreneurship and, and we'll find the right match, whether that means you're going to run the day-to-day -day right away or we're going to transition in into it. So that that's that's what I would say. Well, we and, and be comfortable with the situation. We will be, we will make sure we take care of you. Fantastic. So finally, James, I want to give you uh, the opportunity uh, to maybe in these minutes uh, share with my audience uh, maybe something that we've not touched on that you would like them to know about franchising business. Yeah, I just say, you know, franchising business, they give you the playbook to be successful. Just follow it. And you, 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 when we sit down and we talk about the possibilities of the industries that are out there, it could just blow you away of what is a franchise uh, that, that can support support you. And that there is there is a franchise out there that I guarantee you will, will strike your interest, pique your interest, and will give you that great support. And we'll find it. And uh, you know, you'll, you'll have a uh, hopefully a generation of wealth from it. So good. Thank you very much, James, uh, for coming on the show today. I've enjoyed this uh, conversation and I know that my audience, they are going to find it beneficial as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.